The clear position therefore is that any judicial magistrate, before taking cognizance of the offence, can order investigation under section 156 within bracket 3 of the code. If he does so, he is not to examine the complainant on both, because he was not taking cognizance of any offence therein. For the purpose of enabling the police to start investigation, it is open to the magistrate to direct the police to register an FIR. There is nothing illegal in doing so. After all registration of an FIR involves only the process of entering the substance of the information relating to the commission of the cognizable offence in a book kept by the officer in charge of the police station as indicated in section 154 of the code. Even if a magistrate does not say in so many words while directing investigation under section 156 within bracket 3 of the code that an FIR should be registered, it is the duty of the officer in charge of the police station to register the FIR regarding the cognizable offence disclosed by the complainant because that police officer could take further steps contemplated in Chapter 12 of the Code only thereafter. When a magistrate receives a complaint, he is not bound to take cognizance if the facts alleged in the complaint disclose the commission of an offence. The magistrate has discretion in the matter. If on a reading of the complaint, he finds that the allegations therein disclose a cognizable offence and the forwarding of the complaint to the police for investigation under section 156 within bracket 3 will be conducive to justice and save the valuable time of the magistrate from being wasted in inquiring into a matter which was primarily the duty of the police to investigate. He will be justified in adopting that course was an alternative to taking cognizance of the offence itself. A manifesto issued by a political party in order to get votes is not to be taken as gospel. It is not to be regarded as a bond, signed, sealed and delivered. It may contain and often does contain promises or proposals that are quite unworkable or impossible of attainment. Very few of the electorate read the manifesto in full. A goodly number only know of it from what they read in the newspapers or hear on television. Many know nothing whatever of what it contains. When they come to the polling booth, none of them vote for the manifesto. Certainly not for every promise or proposal in it. Some may buy influenced by one proposal, others by another. Many are not influenced by it at all. They vote for a party and not for a manifesto. I have no doubt that in this case many ratepayers voted for the Labour Party even though, on this one I item alone, it was against their interests. And vice versa. It seems to me that no party can or should claim a mandate and commitment for any one item in a long manifesto. Don't forget to like, 
comment and subscribe to our channel for more informative videos like this one. Hit that notification bell to stay updated with the latest tips and tricks to succeed in your exams. Stay connected with us on social media for additional resources and updates. Join our telegram group https colon double forward slash t dot me forward slash lakshisteno for any query whatsapp on 9991560799